watching Pokemon now. You know now what? I'm just watching Pokemon? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm watching because I'm I'm like, oh, the Indigo League, whatever, is GOAT. Mm-hmm. But, but my friend tells me, no, you have to watch XY, blah, blah, blah. So I've been watching XY, yeah. and it just, just swoops me back in from when I was like eight, nine years old. So... A hundred Pokemon is all you needed. Ah, but did you watch it on on? I was gonna say on NXT. Are you watch it on <laughs> ne- on Netflix? <laughs>
Oh, you letting me go first because you're always talking first. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> come on, <laughs> Jenna like, with the shade come come on, right you know, away. You already know I had Damn. to. We had to do it a little bit. Yo, your name is the boss for a reason. You always go first anyway, so just go ahead. So, basically, when, how... I guess we'll talk. I don't know if you want, when you want to discuss that, but we came about. We, me and Blue met, and every week we would have just different meetings at Buffalo uh, Wild, Wild Wings. Wings. And Love Buffalo Wild Wings. That's where, all the, the great, that's where all the great <laughs> ideas come about. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> but Y'all yeah. listening? I'm here. <laughs> at Peter A Radio on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we met every week, and we just started throwing different ideas at each other. And then... Blue said, you know what would be a great idea for us to do just to hype up the show would be would do promos. And with wrestling, you know, that's a big thing, promos, right? So we just started, you know, brainstorming different ideas and different sketches. And we both had our ideas. We decided on the best ones. And since Blue has a lot of connections from his previous job, it just made it easier and simple for us to just put our ideas to life. And then... I mean, I wasn't expecting this. I don't think he expected this Not to happen this so quick. But the WWE shop DM'd me and was like, listen, this is, we really like you guys'. Is- and that's what, when you after the second promo. Like, we didn't even launch the podcast wow. yet. Yeah, it was just the second one. It was the Rock and Jericho one. That was, I mean, I, I had, I'm going to take credit for that because that was. Sure. If you got people sliding into your DMs already, <laughs> you, know you, pop it. you know you got something. Yeah, you know. I don't want to toot my own heart. But no, I'm saying in regards to the that promo because I'm a huge, everyone who knows me knows that my favorite wrestler ever is The Rock. So for that yeah. promo, that's when after they got in contact with us. And not to, I guess, talk too much about what was discussed, but just they felt that we can do something a little bit different than what they actually do with their other sponsors and what have you. Just do something a little bit more creative. So ever since then... You know, now that's what me and Blue do. We, besides coming up with ideas for the show, we have to brainstorm, brainstorm different promos that we have just to help promote whatever product or, you know, merchandise that they want to push. Yeah, and at the same time, we still try to find things that would, would connect with the audience and make them, oh, yeah, I remember that promo. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's the dynamic they're trying to go with. So, like, with the Sasha jacket. She had the Sasha jacket on. I had a Macho Man shirt on. Everybody knows that Billy loves Macho Man. So, it was just like, Oh, that's the connection between the two while we're doing our own thing. And we're going back and forth like, wait, nah, why are you always shining? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, because that's what I do, man. I shine. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's what I noticed about y'all from the start when you um, were launching this podcast. I'm like, okay, these guys are look really professional. I'm thinking like, oh, Jenna's probably some superstar from somewhere. You know what I mean? Some other <laughs> why, show. You. I'm like, oh, that, that's so cool. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know Blue has connections. But like you guys are just two, like you said, two wrestling fans who just love what you do. And you're very focused. You have that professionalism. You know what I mean? I think that's what attracted, you know, sponsorships. And that's good. I, yeah. I'm trying to do that for myself. But I'm glad you guys are just being who you are. And uh, I want to talk about an element of your show that's a little confusing to me because I'm not a sports fan, right. so I don't really understand something like this, your draft system. And to me, it kind of looks like like a work pool that people would do for like NCAA tournaments and almost like fantasy sports. So can you like quickly go through what your draft is? First of all, it took us like five days to come up with this system. <laughs> yeah. Like, because honestly, me... Being like, I just wanted to use somebody else's system. Like, hey, there's something right here. Let's just use this, whatever the case may be. And Jenna's like, no, let's create our own and go by that. So that when this blow up, we have our own thing to do. I'm like, yeah, we can go back to our own thing, but let's just use this. This is already set up. She's like, no, we have to do our own system. And me being very like <laughs> strong minded, strong minded, and he he's more chill than Tranquilo. I am. When, but okay. <laughs> I thought it was the opposite. I'm thinking blue is like, you know, the you know what I mean? No, I'm more I'm very more um strong minded. He's he's strong minded too, but he's chill. Me, I'm just more like, no, we gotta do this. This is what we have to do. So but yeah, I felt that if if you if you blow up, if something catches on and we're using someone else's system, now we have to let's say if there's money involved, now you have to pay that person. Whereas if you do your own thing, now we get to take the credit. And we can profit off of that. So that was my mindset in regards to that. Yeah, and, you know, that part didn't really take too long. It took, like, what, an hour and a half to decide on. Yeah. And it was like, all right, cool. So then for the next five days, we had to break down the point system. 
<laughs> of the draft to make it sense for what we add more people in. So okay, we break it down in seasons because you know wrestling doesn't have really seasons unless you count like WrestleMania to WrestleMania type of situation. But for the main part, it doesn't really have seasons. So we like, I just decide what's the six month season for us would be. Would it be three months, six months? We decided it would be six months. And um, yeah, then we went down to points. How much points you get for this and that and that's it. Like it really was a long, long process and a lot of arguing. <laughs> so the Can't whole tell. the whole thing with. I'm, I don't participate in fantasy like sports too often. He does. Um, but the whole idea, it, correct me if I'm wrong, with fantasy uh, sports is just you have you draft players at the end of the day. You have, And if you're watching the sport, you have to pay attention to what exactly how that player is performing. Mm-hmm. And then that will translate into points. points. And at the end of the season – if there's a pool of money, whatever, like, I don't know, whatever someone decides to use, like, whatever type of fantasy right. program that they use, whatever the, the gift is or the prize is, that's what you're trying to obtain. So, again, like, you don't do that with wrestling, so that's kind of, like, a cool idea for us to do. So, like he said, we thought about the different points. It took a, basically a weekend or so just to figure out, okay, Who's going to get the points if they won this championship? Or if they lost, how many points do you lose? So that's essentially what it comes down to. Just not necessarily picking your favorite wrestler, but just thinking, okay, how is this superstar going to perform? You know? And yeah. and if I, if that, at the end of the season, if I wound up, you know, winning, what do I get for that? So that was the kind of the mindset. And we're, you know, we're hoping that the podcast grows so now that we can open it up to other people so now we can even make it more competitive and have different prizes and giveaways and what have you. And one of the reasons why we did decide to do our own is because we looked at different, you know, avenues and stuff like that. And we didn't like how they didn't compare the women's championship to the men's championship. And that was like the biggest thing for me and her. And it was just like, they're not equal. So it's like, dang. So how do we, you know, fix this? Right. And it was just like, yeah, we just managed to just do our own. Because yeah. yeah. it, it makes sense because they're on the same platform. So why is less than, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So let's say if, I know Blue has AJ on his team. And Jenna has like Andre Cien Almas, right? Yes. And let's say AJ makes an appearance on SmackDown. Do they get a point? Yeah, yeah. like two okay. points, right? For your parents? Yeah. Oh, all right. Because that, that, that means everything these days if right. you're on TV. And if you yeah. win, there's a different level of points yeah. for winning. Exactly. Okay, all right. Because at then, first I didn't understand it, but now I get it. Yeah, so I mean, if there's a stipulation win, so if you want a ladder match, right, it's going to be seen more as just a regular, you know, win. So we we rate that a little bit higher. You get more points for that stipulation win. Okay. Whereas, should you get points if there's a double count out? No, because no one won. So it's just different things like that. So You get points deducted if somebody didn't show up at all. and We took everything into account. Like We really sat down. I was like, yo, let's think about every possible right. situation. And it's, as, very, it's complex. It is and complex. And that's good. It is. But and as we you know, as we continue to go every week and months that go by, we'll make obviously the different tweaks here and there. Because at the end of the day, we're starting out. So we, we don't right. have the blueprint. But the more knowledge and experience we gain, it'll only get better from there. Yes, and your live show recently at the Edison Ale House. Yeah. I had so much fun. What? That was a bomb. <laughs> it was so crazy. Yeah, it was. It definitely was. Definitely over exceeded what I thought it was going to be. The bomb. Did and I think just... that's a good thing. I'm sorry, Peter. The bomb. It was the bomb. <laughs> it's 1996 it's, it's over 1996 here. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. bomb diggity. The yeah. roof is on fire. Like, she just picks on me about what I said. Let's say, get like. jiggy with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah why no, not? No, why no. not? You got me thinking about that Keenan and Kel episode when he turned Rigby <laughs> into the bomb, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that reference. Oh, Thank God you, sir. Damn it. it was so great. And uh, okay, doing a live podcast, right? Um, I'm sure you guys went through some obstacles before that kind of happened. So um, can you walk me through any kind of issues you might have had you know, setting up? We didn't. I don't, we didn't, to be no. honest with you. Because, again, Blue is very knowledgeable in a, a lot of just engineering and just a lot of this media stuff. So... I'm fortunate for that because I wouldn't know what to do. So he knew the right calls to make and what have you. And it really, it was just a matter of after WrestleMania, him getting in contact with the person to do sound. Not even the person to do sound, but the restaurants, like the bars, like who was going to give us the okay to do it. Because then after that, which makes sense because if someone tells you, okay, we're going to do a show and it should bring in more clientele, which is generates more money. They're not going to tell you no. Mm -hmm. Right. So once we got the okay from that um, that bar, 
Yeah. Everything like, it was it went smoothly. But that was basically an idea we had from the first moment we met. We was like, yo, backlash is gonna be on our side of town, Jersey. My side of town, actually. She's from New York. From oh, Jersey, wow. right? <laughs> the shade return. Where where do we typically record? So it? we're not talking about that. We're talking about Edison Air House. So okay. We was like, all right, boom. When we come back, we're going to figure it out. So we were like, all right, we're going to do backlash. We're going to do backlash. So after WrestleMania, it was just like, all right, backlash is next. <laughs> Let's make sure we put this together and let it happen. And fortunately, again, that we found the spot right across from the box office, right next to Prudential Center. They was okay with it. They was like, you know, guys, so it's like, whenever they come here now, you guys could do it. So we have a house now to do a live show in Jersey whenever they come to Prudential Center. And I think that's awesome. And I'm like, I'm... I was honestly surprised at the turnout, which now in hindsight, I shouldn't have been just because it's a wrestling event. People want to drink or whatever before, and eat before they go to the show. So now if you have all the, the same people that like the same thing and now we're discussing that same thing that you, these people enjoy, it, of course the turnout was going to be pretty good. So now the whole idea is just to build on that because I know definitely someone um, reached out and said you guys should definitely – try to go to different cities which would be super cool yeah we also yeah we definitely got an offer in another to do another big four people view that we were thinking about doing actually we got two offers so we're thinking about doing that and maybe yeah it might be our thing Did, so. was there ever an issue with the the people you know who ran the bar like oh you guys aren't big enough or nah. it, was, it was no issue it was like none that. of that didn't care. because okay. it, again it comes down to okay it's an event right people yeah. are going to come into my establishment, establishment to Drink and eat. So if you can bring a little bit more awareness to where, you know, where we're at. And make have more fun of it. Because they're not going to have the WWE Network on TV to listen to the pre-show. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they're like, instead of people just coming in here, eat and then dipping. Because that's what will happen, right? You just get your food, get one beer, and then you're out. But if you have a live, like, live podcast or kind of an entertainment situation. And it's, it's interactive, too. Right, it's interactive. It's interactive. You're going to sit there and keep drinking. And more people are keep walking like, hey, why is this thing so packed? It's like a party, and it goes. Back, it goes <laughs> back to what he said in regards to the WWE Network. You have their, they have their own kickoff show, but again, it's inclusive to them, the superstars, the mm, right. right. So you don't really get really fan interaction, what have you. And that's what we were there for for fan interaction. So, was there anything that you think you've learned from this experience that you can carry on to your next live podcast? Uh. Probably try to get somebody to, to handle the camera more because <laughs> that was very essential. Shout yeah. out to our sound guy because he just took the role. Like, it wasn't even, we didn't ask him. He, he just took the it. role. Like, he was like, yo, this is, and I feel like he just felt our energy and he was just like, yo, they're doing something dope. I'm going to, you know, make sure this relationship really works and I'm going to do my part and make sure this looks good on camera. Right, because I expected him to actually just, just sit there <laughs> or just kind of walk out when the time was for him to get his equipment and then do what he has to do. But, I yeah. think going forward, the sound guy worked for the bar. No, no we, we hired him. It was oh, some, okay. Yeah. All right. And I just if for the next one, just it, the whole thing is about getting better and yes. the quality to get better because, again, we did it. It was YouTube live, and yeah. we didn't have the proper, I guess, in regards to camera wise. So it's just to only like get better and and cleaner with stuff. I think that's the ultimate goal. And probably put out a producer our show a little bit more because we didn't expect to run through the card that fast. We called it audible, like in between. I looked at the card and I looked at her. I was like, "We're gonna take a quick intermission," and she just looked at me like, "Uh, all right." <laughs> and I hit the intermission, but I'm like, "Yo, we gotta slow down. <laughs> this card is almost done. We have like another hour and a half to go." So yeah, we just gotta you know put it together more. Yeah, y'all definitely filled two hours. You know what I mean? Like that was really. And crazy. we could have kept going too, because the bar was like, "Yo, the um, the owner came over. He's like, you guys are leaving." I'm like, yeah, you said when you can stay here to six. He's like, next time, just keep going until the door is open and people start walking out. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and ultimately, too, we couldn't really necessarily stay just because we wanted to see the show. So, right, so like, it's not, you know, <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but, yeah, I, I, it was an exciting experience. And look I can't wait for the, the next one. Yeah, look yeah. forward to the future ones. Yeah, because I think that you guys, I think you guys did your podcast as you would have done it anyway, but it was right. more backlash centered. Right. Right. And I think it was very creative that you didn't really talk about backlash in the previous podcast because you saved that conversation right. for the live show. I think that was, that right. was very great. And I'm excited for the, for the next live podcast. <laughs> yeah, definitely, most definitely. So now um, I want to talk about something that you guys have been chatting about in your podcast and many other uh, wrestling pundits have been discussing this in, in WWE. 
like who is the next star, be it male or female. So mm-hmm. I want to know what your guys' thoughts, you know, are on, on that. that. Yes. Do you mean like people that's already established, or do you think more like up and coming in, into the system? Like who will take? Who do you think will take like John Cena's spot, or do you think that spot is even necessary? I don't think it's necessary. Mm. Yeah. Because we've had this. Um, debate a couple of weeks ago in regards to who's the face of the company. He feels AJ, and I don't disagree with that, but I also see guys like Seth Rollins and Finn Balor that are super popular, yeah. you know, especially if you put them in the right fuse and what have you. And I, I don't think it's at this point needed because, again, it just reminds me of, in a sense, back in the day. I always talk about the Attitude Era. That's the era that I grew up in. That's the golden in. era. It's the golden era. Um Obviously, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the face, right? Mm-hmm. There was no question about that. But as I have mentioned before, in our podcast at least, The Rock was my guy, and The Rock did his thing where he competed to get that top spot. So there was times where you were like, well, is Stone Cold really the face after a while, or is it The Rock? Because then Stone Cold left after he got injured and had to have yep. surgery. The Rock took over. He was selling out and what have you, but you can't forget about guys like Triple H. You know, you need every good face needs a heel. You had guys like Kurt Angle. You had all these guys competing for the top spot, and it made good television. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think you need that one guy. You know. Yeah, this era you don't need a Hulk Hogan. That's what I think it comes down to. Back then it was Hulk Hogan. Even though Randy Savage was right there next to him, you know what I'm saying? He never got the spotlight that Hogan got. But now in today's age with the social media and all these different outlets and different new audience. You don't need just one anymore because now AJ caters to a certain crowd. You know what I'm saying? Seth Rollins caters to a certain crowd. Finn Balor, you know, connects with a certain crowd, and it works that way. So now everybody's on the top. So And, and now it's a situation, too, where back in the day, we didn't think about women possibly being faces of the company. Right. But now you have legitimate superstars that are more popular, more popular, excuse me, I can't even talk, <laughs> more popular than other male, kind of male you know what I mean? Superstars, so Amber now Moon, you have Sasha Banks. You have it, Charlotte. you have that now. You have that dynamic too. So I really don't think at this point you need a one particular person to be the face of the company. And don't you think like wrestling audience are very like intertwined now? Because now when you go to wrestling shows, you see Bullet Club shirts, Young Buck yeah. shirts, exactly. Kenny Omega shirts, yeah, uh, exactly. Gobanali shirts. I remember I went to uh, Raw at the Coliseum last year. I saw so many. Uh, Gubernale shirts. It was crazy. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Like everyone, like you said, is competing for that one spot, or maybe there maybe isn't a one spot. There's just a bunch of people at the top. Right. Right. You know what I mean? The right. mountain is very congested. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's fantastic. Look at Kenny Omega now. Look at yeah. Okada and, Look and at then Cody you, Rhodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like, this all in show is just like right. What yeah. the hell? They sold it out. What like ten minutes? Like yeah. the 27, 27 minutes and thirty seven seconds. Yeah, and uh, I think the biggest controversy in uh, pro wrestling now, Roman Reigns. <laughs> now, Your I know guy. you guys have... Sure guy. Don't be putting it on me. Look, yeah, I know you guys have a difference <laughs> of opinion when it comes to Roman. So what do you think is the issue with Roman Reigns, if any? You want to start off with The issue with Roman Reigns is it has a lot to do with his booking, mm-hmm. right? We've, again, me and Blue have had these conversations on our podcast and just... And me and him both agree on this this situation. You can't keep forcing someone down That's our throats connecting. that that is not it's just not working. I don't again, I don't think Roman is a bad wrestler. I don't think he's a bad talker. I think he works well with a lot of superstars. But if it's not working, why I just in, in all in any type of business, whether it's wrestling, whether it's banking, whether whatever, if something's not working, how do we change it and make it better so people can like it and appreciate it. You have to think of something different. You can't continue to push him. And then, you know, you push him and you constantly put him in the main event, right? You don't, the main event shouldn't be, you know, people shouldn't be paying attention, right? We should be fully engaged into a main event. So if this is the what, how many main events has he had in a row? This year, he made it every, every pay-per-view this year. And people are not paying attention or they're throwing peach balls or they're chanting and not actually paying t- paying attention to the match. Something's not right. And again, I don't think it's necessarily the person. I just think it's what they're doing because as we had this debate two weeks ago. Two weeks ago when I explained to him. A few years ago when it was, and I understand what you're saying, the hot tag or what have you, but a few years ago when they were in the Shield, 
people didn't hate Roman. He wasn't the weakest link, right? Because at the time, we weren't thinking about him being the face of the company, even though there was talks about it, but we didn't actually realize, okay, it was still John Cena, essentially, right? right? So, and then that was Daniel Bryan's rise to fame, and CM Punk was there at the time. Exactly. Right. So then when, and at the time, that's why the audience rejected Batista, right? Because it was like it should have been it, it should have been, been Daniel Bryan that won. But then when we saw Roman dominate, people w- couldn't believe it because it wasn't okay. Maybe it's not going to be Batista that's going to win. But then he did win. So obviously the fans didn't like that. So clearly, you know, year after year, fans are telling you what they want, and to, for you to not listen, that's the issue. So what do you do if you're not listening? You're going to reject the product. You're going to do everything in your power to. Show you, show them that this is not worth what we're feeling. So I, that's what I think is the issue with him. To and, be honest, with um, I and I agree, and I have some extra points. So like during it, like she said, a backlash. He was main eventing over the world title. Like, why would somebody that's not champion, no have no title at all, in a meaningless feud, main event a pay per view? So like me and her were talking about it when it happened. I told her like the building just deflated when they found out the WWE championship was defending like third before last. And that Roman was going to main event. And he just heard everybody just groan a bit. It was like, are you serious? And it just killed the building in a way. And it's like, so you just put somebody higher than the title. And it hurts his credibility. Like I said, I don't hate the person. Like, Roman Reigns as a person is great. You see a lot of things he does off camera. Talking to the fans and stuff like that. Take his personal time to do. It's just that people are rejecting the character. So you can't really boo WWE sign. <laughs> so this is the character you sent out. So this is what we're going to react to. And that's what really hurts him at the end of the day. Yeah. So, Because I think that Roman Reigns, right? I mean, I think he has star power potential. I mean, I think he, he has a fan well, base. He yeah, does. he has potential. Yeah, but he's not he, he's not ready to, like, take the ring. go over a title. You know, he's right. not bigger than the championship yet. Which is funny because back in the day, it was it was never that. It was, okay, the title, the main title was is being defended at a pay-per-view. That's the main event. There's right. no question about that. But, but for nowadays where... You can have part timers or whoever, someone who's not carrying the title main event. It just it's I don't know. It's just again, I always go back to the past, but I felt like just the past worked. You know, there was a reason why things worked back then. Right. And just when to you, add a little bit to that, I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off. No, no, no. And it's like again with his character, me and her had this discussion, is it him or is it, you know, creative? But I feel like for me personally, I feel like his character could do so much more. Like his mic skills got better. Yes. I'm not gonna say that they're awesome or great, but it got better. But I also want his A ring to be different as well. Because you're supposed to be a powerhouse. So just do some power moves. You know what I'm saying? Add something to your repertoire instead of doing the same sequence of a comeback. I get everybody got their specialty moves, but even, you know, Seth Rollins or AJ or Finn, they tweak it a bit. They create it in a reversal rate. You know what I'm saying? Like remember when um Shinsuke went for the Kinshasa. And AJ flipped it into a style clash. Nobody saw that coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with, with Roman, it's a little bit too telegraphed now. So people are going to reject it. I think it goes back to psychology. Yeah. I think you can have five moves in a match or ten moves in a match. Right. But how you get to those moves, how you get to the spear, how you get yeah. to the Samoan drop, that is, that's important. Yeah, he's not that ring general yet. He's not, he's no, not that not psychology yet. yet. No, I mean, he's 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 better than most, right. but because he can hold his own against Brock Lesnar, I Exa- think. Exactly. Yeah, WrestleMania 31 to me is an underrated main exactly. event. Exactly. I think. And speaking of which, like Brock, right? If Brock and like say AJ or Shawn Michaels, like two big legends, had a pay per view match, of course that's going to go beyond the title because right. they are they got that star power. Right. Roman Reigns is not there yet. Right. right. Maybe let's see what happens a couple of years down the line. Right. And you know, going back, let's. You know, talk Brock Lesnar now. You know, there's. I know you guys have a difference of opinion. And I love Brock too, but he's been in WWE right back in WWE for six years before you know, you know his time that he left after right, right, right. 04. So, do you think Brock Lesnar's second run was a success or or failure, in your opinion? Uh, I don't think. I don't it, think it's. it's a, I think it's a failure. Really? Yeah, okay. I think it's a failure. And this is my guy. Yeah. The reason why I think it's a failure is because, like, when me and her had a discussion, to me, my opinion is Brock was built up for Roman to eat. So Roman could take that I conquered the beast mentality. But then, because of how they did with Roman, they haven't been able to feed Brock to Roman yet. So Roman could take that universal title. I'm like, yo, I'm the guy. I'm the one that took the beast down. So it kind of backfired them on them See, in a way. See, but the thing is about that is... 
Roman Reigns was wasn't even a thought when Brock Lesnar went back into the WWE. So I don't necessarily agree with that. I do agree that I I do find it to be a failure just for just the simple fact that again this is what guys like CM Punk have. And again, I know it wasn't about Brock Lesnar; it was about The Rock. But this is why they complained or had an issue because. Okay, yeah, I understand you need the star power. But back in the day, WrestleMania, yeah, WrestleMania did have its celebrities. Like but Tyson you, and such? You didn't have celebrities overtaking the actual superstars. It was just, it complemented right. the show. Mm. So when you have someone that, in my opinion, that's that's hijacked the title and this title is not defended, granted, I understand, you know, Blue always tells me, well, back in the day, they didn't do that. You know, back in the day, they did do that. You didn't. You very rarely saw the title. Well, in the Attitude Era, you always did see the title, right? And that just made good TV. When you can have a a, champ, a heavyweight championship match on free TV, you know, that, that was, it was exciting because you just never knew, okay, when this title was going to be defended. It just, it gave it that level of ex- excitement. Now, it's just like, it's the norm. Like, okay, we're not going to see Brock. We're not going to see Paul. We're not going to see this title. Roman has to, you know, pretend to have a feud with this person in the meantime until Brock decides he wants to show up. And as great as Paul Heyman is, I will never tell you, oh, Paul Heyman is this, that, and the third. He's great, you know, and he's a legend in the wrestling community, but it's like he says the same thing every time Brock shows up, you know, and it's it doesn't excite me. And I get and I think the audience, you know, sings along with his catchphrases and what have you, just because it's Paul Heyman. But he's not saying anything that's enticing or different so i i think it's a failure in a sense not because i'm pretty sure the wwe is making money that they the money that they want but i think it's a failure just for the product how well it, it's going at long the, term long term i think it's i don't, I don't think it, it's helped the product to be honest with you i think that at first it was it was interesting, yeah. Because he was it wasn't he wasn't even a title pitcher. Exactly, he was, he was just having regular matches. Exactly, his matches with CM Punk but, were yeah, and that fantastic. and with Cena. I remember, it, yeah. it felt real when you remember when he uh, busted Cena's lip oh, open. Oh right, with, with that it That's felt when real. Suplex City yeah. came in. His match with Randy. <laughs> his match with Randy was great right. at SummerSlam. So don't but get, yeah, back don't in, throw the belt at him. Yeah. Because you're not going to see him every so often. You know what I mean? But that's the, so that's my point. With the that's yeah. what they gave him the belt so that you know. Roman could conquer. And I get what she's saying in the beginning. Like I was about to say the exact same thing you just said. In the beginning, he came in hot. He was having regular matches. Everybody loved him when he came back because he was that beast that we remembered. Yeah. But then when the idea came to, yo, let's create this so this could happen, mm-hmm. it was just like, all right, so there's no point in him showing up anymore. But I don't think that's... And Brock's already a star yeah. Yeah. when he came in. I so don't... he didn't need the belt. But I don't, I don't think that was, let's do this to do that. I think that's just how it just started to come about. You know, I think you cater, they catered to Brock. That was the situation. And now you figure, okay, we have Roman. Maybe we can get something out of this. And then and then the whole situation, and that's just how it came about. But I don't think the the intention was, okay, let's build up Brock so Roman can conquer. I don't I don't believe that at the all. The reason why I feel that way is because, like you said, when he came in, he dominated John Cena. Who, that was the face at the time. Yep. And once he did that to John Cena, John Cena wasn't looked at the same no more. Yep. So it was just the, the question was automatically was who's the next guy? And the story there was <laughs> the story there was interesting because think about it. Brock left abruptly in 04. Right. Who is the next top guy? Who's the next guy on the rise? Right. John Cena. Right. Right. And Brock says, he's like, if I didn't leave, you wouldn't be who you are. Right. Great story. That's a great right. story. You know what I mean? It's perfect. Right. And it felt real. Mm-hmm. Again, going no back titles to the, involved. Right. And it felt real. I but I just don't see that. I think that's just how it came about, you know what I mean? But I don't see they built up Brock Lesnar to be this just to face Roman. I just think it was a situation where, okay, we threw all this money at him. You know, let's just let's, let's have him be a beast and just conquer everybody. That's really what it comes down to. So where do we go from here for Brock, do you think? I think I, it's time for him to go, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I think there's no competition? No, that's not no. even that. I, like, I feel like... Um, Samoa Joe, but Samoa Joe is on SmackDown, so they, they ruined that already. Um, it's, and that's the thing. It's like, who's going to who's gonna conquer the beast, in a sense? Because Roman had how many, at least four tries, and he couldn't do it. Which would make a good storyline, like, uh, I couldn't overcome this, but I'm going to eventually overcome it if they booked Roman pr- um, correctly. But now, you're right. Who, who can... 
who who's gonna beat Brock at the end of the day? And I I don't know. <laughs> it's not, and then maybe it's gonna be Bobby Lashley. There's talks about Bobby Lashley doing it, you know. Um, but I think SummerSlam might be his last run. He's gonna take his break again, and then he probably be done. Because honestly, with you, Brock don't need the money. <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't need that. He, do, no. he loves the business. He does. Yeah. That's that's why he does it. And um, a lot of people say like, well, his match has been mediocre since he's been back. But I say, like, look at the match he had with AJ. He actually Fantastic. put effort because he respects AJ. He was selling Paul it backstage, Heyman said too. He respects AJ. They both respect but AJ. But it should if someone that loves the business, it shouldn't be, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on a good show with him because I respect him. It's should you should be putting on a good show for every match. And he doesn't put on a good show for it's this you expect the same thing from Brock. You can't always put that on Roman. When they I'm not putting that's the thing. I'm not saying it's just in general. It's a general uh top um, you know, statement. If you love the business, it's, I'm going to put my all into every match and every feud. And, yeah, okay, you respect AJ, cool. But you don't respect Randy, you don't respect Braun, you don't respect this person. You know what I mean? You can't. I don't well, think it should be a situation where you pick and choose. I'm going to put my all into it because this guy, he's he's good. I think he gave well, a good rub to Randy. He did not, not, he, not only to Randy, but also to Braun. I think, and again, this goes back to the backstage. Of, we had these discussions of how the people backstage tell them how to do the match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and but... I feel like, you got agents back there. You got right? agents back there yeah. that produces the show for you. And I feel like when Braun, he had a good match with Braun. Braun dominated him. Yeah. And he then with Randy, like Randy decided to take a hard hit, you know what I'm saying, for the business. And it's just like when it came to Roman. I don't think Randy decided to take a hard hit. I think Brock, there was there was no, they, rumblings. There was rumblings about something that Brock didn't care for. What Randy had said, and no, I don't know. no, 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 I don't know Brock, about that. Randy, they they said that Randy and Brock yeah. had a discussion amongst himself. Vince didn't know, and Randy knew that he was going to take a hard hit and get busted open. He was okay with it. No, because when Jericho and Brock had their altercation, yeah, they thought it Vince was, was like, he was "Calm down, it's a work." Yeah, they thought it was a shoot, and that's when Jericho got mad and he was like, "No, yeah. no, this was planned. It's good." Okay. Um, but with again. I think they just do that to, to create that hate for Brock when they have him repeatedly do the same thing with, with Roman. You know what I'm saying? And again, with, you know, Brock and, and Paul, they have pull. So when it came to AJ, they're like, yo, I kind of want to just do this with AJ. Like, it's a throwaway match. It's title for, like, it's champion for champion. It's nothing, you know, story-wise. So let us have that fun kind of situation. Yeah. So Okay, I mean, I, I stand corrected, you know, mm-hmm. you you guys made a valid point in that sense. Um, yeah, so finally got a point. <laughs> but at, at this point, I think he, I, it's, I don't think he's needed. I, I think the product can prosper without him at this point. Yeah, there's um, a lot of talent now. There's yeah, a lot it's of a talent. Lot. Yeah, it's if a you lot. told me ex- now, you told me when he came back, it was it was very few people that you could, you know what I mean? Yeah, Brock was needed. I think everyone was happy that Brock was there. He's yeah. not needed at this point. He's not yeah. needed to to sell WrestleMania. You know what I mean? It's I think you got it's Ronda like, now. Yeah, Ronda. Let's see what happens with that. You know, I'm very. And he didn't curious. sound like he. He didn't sound like he was too happy about that. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is the sense of like how they're booking her. This is what I don't like. Like I'm all for she want to try it. Mm-hmm. It's cool. She showed like she really wants to do it. Anybody loves the business, then you should try the business. But to have one tag team match and then now you're doing live shows because people complained mm-hmm. about your title shot. It's not the same to me. It's kind of like the whole thing with, you know, how we say about But is that the reason why that they did the, the, the live, live shows? shows? Yeah, because at first it wasn't really promoted like that. I think she's, she's gonna, just green. Like probably she, needs to learn some things. Yeah, that's what I'm know? saying. Like, in the, like, with the live shows, she wasn't really promoted for the live shows until people was like, she got the title shot. I'd be like, oh, she got a title shot. She didn't have a singles match yet. And it was like, oh, but she's going to be on live shows next week. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. So it was just like... They just need to put her on, like you said she's full-time, you said she's not going to get special treatment. Yeah. So put her on TV, let her do something. Let her at least like make a, an appearance and not actually work until she's ready to actually do a one-on-one match. And if match. that's the case, yeah. so why are you giving her a title shot at the next pay-per-view? Because I think it's just star <laughs> power, right? Like I was talking about this with Jenna, like WWE is like a top 40 radio station. They want who's hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I saw a video of uh, her kind of training with Goldust, you know, so hopefully she'll be ready by Money in the Bank. Yeah. But Nia is still pretty new. She, so she's, is this going to be gonna, interesting? Who's going to lead who? Exactly. They have to heavily yes. agent this match. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But it, I think it'll be interesting just to see because it's kind of unpredictable. I don't mind Ronda. Yeah. I don't mind Ronda. No, we her, we, like we Ronda both too. like Ronda. Yeah, we just like don't like it. the fact that she always takes moments away from others. Mm-hmm. And I know it's, you know, it's not her. It's not her that's taking right. the moment, you know. Yeah. And I think, and I actually believe that she... 
wants to be full time. She wants to be a part of the locker room and what have you. Wants to be treated just like everybody else. But what you want and what you know they. the chairman <laughs> wants, wants, it's complete a completely different story. Absolutely. So I want to talk about two or five live because Ooh. um it, it's kind of like a bad taste, you know what I mean? It's almost like a death sentence when you hear, like, when a wrestler goes to 205 Live, oh, that's it, we're never going to see them again because right. you don't see the cruiser rates. <laughs> yeah, right. Raw, it was meant for the cruiser rates, right? But you don't see them at all. Right. You know what I They're mean? They're not so, Raw no more. Well, yeah, that's so weird, you know? Right. Like, so what do you guys think is the state of the cruiser rates? Do you think it's a death sentence or, or what? When we, me and Blue started this, this podcast, he told me, no, watch 205 Live because just like everyone else, I, did, I wasn't a fan. I mm-hmm. thought it was cheesy. I thought it was silly. I just, whatever. You know, the WWE tried the whole cruiserweight thing before. It didn't work. So I'm like, oh, here they go again, trying to do the whole WCW thing. He said, no, watch it now. And I said, well, for the sake of this podcast that we're doing, yeah, let me watch it because you want to be knowledgeable. And it's 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 it shouldn't have, I don't want to say it surprised me just because I've been to live shows and I've seen Cedric Alexander and I forget who he was facing. It was at um, MSG last year, and I was like, oh, my God, this match is crazy. And it was from then on, I was like, okay, no, the Cruiserweights, they're really, really good. They just don't have the right platform. Fast forward to now, because I think, what, Triple H has more of a control of 205 Live. Yeah, he's he's had control, just that on Raw, Vince had his hands in it. So (laughs) it's... it's a really good... It's really good. And I think the state of 205 Live, it can... It could be better than where it's at now if maybe if they they did go back on Raw, but you know Triple H put his hand a little bit more in, or could at least I don't know if he has that that authority in that sense, but maybe if they did go back onto Raw, and I know they tried the whole thing with the like NXT where they travel and do the live shows too. They started that for a second and then they stopped. I don't know. I think that would be good too, just to get them out there and to promote them because if you don't watch Two Hundred Five Live. That's really it. You know what I mean? Right. No one knows how good a lot of these superstars are. And I think it's also in the matter of when they went to Raw, you're allowed at a certain time. And they only had one match a night. Maybe two. Maybe, maybe two. two. Maybe. And right. the time wasn't very... They probably gave them like seven minutes right. or five minutes. There's not much you could do in seven or five minutes. You can't really tell a story. And that's how the women's division died before because you gave them seven or five, two minutes to do something. Not even yeah. five. Yeah, two minutes. Right. Yeah. So... When they got their own thing going after SmackDown on the network, people started seeing them more again. And then, too, they stopped pu- trying to push the commercial person ahead of the talent. So then now the talent was able to come out and do what they came, what came out to do. So now you see crowds now decide to stay to watch 205 Live because yeah. they've seen it as opposed to when they first started. People used to leave like, uh, it's 205 Live, we're out. I mean, don't get it twisted. People still do leave. Right. But it's, I think... The it's it is changing a little bit. I think there needs to be more of an awareness to and storytelling. Yeah, and they have that now. And I, okay. to be honest with you, I think they should just do what they do with NXT, bring them to full cell, have them record right all their shows. That's a good idea. And then have them travel. Like put them on Thursday nights. There's nothing on WWE Network on Thursday that's nights. That's idea. every Thursday. Yeah. That's so put idea. them on Thursday nights. Because I'm tired after SmackDown. To be honest. Right. Right. You know what I mean. After right. SmackDown, I'm like, I like me and her would catch it probably the next day. <laughs> yeah, like we the past couple of weeks, it's been like, dude, after working and doing this and now watching a three hour, two hour show, I have to watch something else. Yeah, right. put it put it on a put it on Thursday, put it on Friday, right. something. But I think that's a good idea. Yeah, but it's have have them at full sale. You have a contract with full sale, or find us someplace else that you want to do a contract with. Shoot, do that to perf- performance center and and and, <laughs> and, and do live shows. But what's the incentive to watch 205 Live besides, oh, you're going to see good workers and good matches, but, like, where's the storytelling? Where's yeah, the, no, there's storytelling. You know what I mean? And they got no placement on the pay-per-view. They weren't at Backlash yeah. at all. Yeah. When was the last time they were on pay-per-view? You yeah. know what I mean? So why should I care to watch 205 Live if you're not telling me to really watch it? Merge them you know? with NXT. Put them on the NXT takeovers. Oh, I just think they should have their own day. Yeah. Thursday or Friday or whatever. No, I'm talking about in terms of pay per view wise. To, to put them on the takeovers. To put them on the takeovers. Okay. Because takeovers, we only get like four matches anyway. But wouldn't they think, like, uh, from the talent's perspective, they're getting they think, demoted? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, what am I, developmental now? Yeah. It's not like NXT is like, NXT is doing great, but it's yeah. like, I thought I was on the main roster. You 
promoted this like, okay, we're going to be on Raw. We're a Raw exclusive. I was, now we're part of NXT. I know? was thinking maybe possibly, but then it's just too many pay-per-views. But maybe, I don't know. But it's not that many cruiserweights to, to have. To have a full card. Uh, exactly. But I agree with the whole have like your own like your own day. Put them in one, like in full Three. sale and just let them go there. Because... That's how what happened essentially to NXT, right? There wasn't any incentive or, you know, really let's you guys have to watch NXT. It was just it was the product that they put on was super good and it caught on, right? And that's how NXT became NXT. So, so if, if you do something similar to two oh five, especially if you let Triple H work, especially because that's what he's doing, it'll somehow, some way be where it needs to be. And I, I think and just off there I had an idea. Why don't you just merge NXT and Cruiserweights? Yeah, in a sense, part of NXT, but then we go back to no, oh, the developmental. Thing, yeah. you know no, but but thing is, like, promote it as a bigger brand, like it is mm-hmm. a SmackDown, like it is a Raw, because that's essentially, honestly, NXT has been getting that that rub anyway. You know what I'm saying? And plus, they'll make the money back when they're traveling, so it's not more of a demotion. It's more like we're gonna create this bigger brand to combat with the other two. So now you have NXT and um, Cruiserweights have their uh, monthly. Pay per views. So you want pay per views just for cruise rates? Cruise rates and NXT wrestlers. Well, I that's what I would say. I think the cruise rates should have their own pay per view. I wouldn't do the merger like with a takeover NXT. kind of situation, right? Essentially, okay. but I wouldn't do a merger for, with NXT and two hundred five type thing just because, again, like you said, it might come off as demotion. You mm-hmm. know, like okay, I thought we were on the main roster, now we're developmental. So I would do what you said, have their own day, go at full sale. Let them do their thing, and somehow when you create that hype, then okay, let's do see if we can uh, create some type of pay per view situation for them, or just leave them on their own. To be honest, you know what I mean? I don't, to me, it actually doesn't really look like a development tool now. So you passed it down on to me because then you have the call, like the because the call ups. Because even yeah. now, wrestlers on the main rosters want to go back to NXT, so well, because they have their own. <laughs> everybody goes on a bus, right. you know what I mean? Like, and, NXT, and people come into WWE wanting to stop at NXT before they go to the main roster. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So NXT doesn't even really feel like a developmental no more. And it's just like was better than Mania. It's always better. NXT's always takeovers are always better than the pay per views. Yeah, but at the end of the day, <laughs> granted. NXT, a lot of times the product is better, but I don't. It, in the grand scheme of things, it's essentially seemed as developmental. And yeah. I get, I get what you're saying, and I agree. Superstars want to go back to NXT, or you know, they miss just that time period that they were on. But it's still essentially, you look at it like, okay, they're back at NXT. Right when you told me about recently the revival, right? Right. They apparently they went back there. But it was like Are you one kidding? Off. No, it's just a, I think it's a one-off because of data ones that I, when I was reading about it. I think it's more so like um, for people that didn't go overseas on he, tour. You see how he told me something and had me believe in something and this was going to be a hot <laughs> topic that we can talk oh about God. but then but failed to uh, clarify Yo, I just the situation. This out last you see, this night. is what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? This is what, I just wait, found wait, this out wait, last wait. night. So, basically, so when yeah. were you going to tell me? Huh? When were you going to tell night, me? Last night, did I talk to you last night? No. You couldn't. You Anytime you text me, we talked, and did me, me and you talked, right? About what? About but just in rival? general, we talked, right? You yeah. text me, but we text. You could text mm-hmm. me. We. I yeah. found this late last night. At what time? It was like 12.30, 12.40. And you don't text me later. You know what? I we're, don't. We're on, we're, on, we're, on, we're on someone else's show. All right. We're on someone else's show. Not in front of company. Yo, anyway. not in front of company. <laughs> now you're really the old married couple now. <laughs> Why you got to fight in public? <laughs> but now, what happened is that but people like that didn't go we overseas. If not married, I would kill him if that was the case. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. So now, he people don't that want d- that smoke. Whoa, Jenna. <laughs> anyway, wow. see all this threatening happening. Queen. Look, if, Promo if, queen. if anything ever happens to me in life, this is your first suspect right here. <laughs> wow. Because she's on audio every time threatening my life. I ain't putting it out there. Anyway, but um, so basically, the people. <laughs> I'm Puerto the people Rican the main, and black. And just the people on the main roster indie. that didn't make it, that didn't go overseas, yeah. they came back and helped out NXT because some people from NXT went overseas to help, like. Ticket sales, like Alistair Black went over there because he's from the UK area yeah. and stuff like that. So they kind of like flip flops from wrestling. Is he from the Netherlands? Yeah, but he's yeah. really known out there in the British wrestling world and stuff like that. Okay. So that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, NXT is, is, is great, but there is like a, still like a learning process there because a lot of these wrestlers that come from elsewhere, they probably don't have that television training. Right. Like how to like look at the cameras and that kind of psychology. So I want to know your thoughts. Overall, with the WWE product, 
Where do we stand on it? You go ahead, go ahead first. <laughs> you got it. I'll go after you. Here comes the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be careful you gotta with the careful shit. Careful what I wear. Nah, careful with me. Be, exactly. <laughs> At the end of the day, wrestling is always gonna be, or the WWE is always gonna be, hold a special place in my heart just because I grew up with it. And it's, I, I used to, um, I used to phrase this as like it's a guilty pleasure. Not so much now is it being a guilty pleasure for me to still watch just because I know so many other people are into it. But before, when I didn't know anybody that was into wrestling still, I used to just phrase it as it's a guilty pleasure. It's mm. like, you know what I mean? It's not that good, but you still can't help but watch it. But now you have I have friends and other people that I thoroughly get to dis- have debates and discussions and enjoy and go to events with. You're welcome. Um, it's, wow. First of all, it's not <laughs> you. Look out. It's, Ouch. It's, it's not you, buddy. So Ouch. let's fall that back. Hurts. Yeah, we don't talk about wrestling. We don't go to events. All right, cool. We went to one event. We talk oh, about so, wrestling because we have a show. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, wow. I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Oh, wow. But Remember that all in invitation? That's, I'm taking it back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, it's, it's better. I will say it's better than when I first started watching again because I had stopped watching wrestling for a while after, again, I'm a huge Rock fan. So once guys like The Rock, officially left and then Stone Cold retired and this person left and just this whole new wave of talent started coming in and I just couldn't really get with the first draft. Like, now I like the draft now. But when they had the draft back in the day, I was like, what is this? This is not what I'm used to. Right. So, you know, you get older, you kind of move away from that. But then The Rock came back in 2011 and I kept watching just because, okay, is he going to be on this episode? Is he going to be on this episode? He's going to be on this pay-per-view? So it was like, I continue to watch, but... It wasn't that good from, like, I want to say 2011, 2014. I don't know. Whenever NXT started really coming into the forefront, I didn't find the product to be good. It was just like, okay, it's there. You watch it, but what's going on? It's, or what have you. But then as NXT started to catch on and you had all these different talents that started coming up, the product got instantly better. So I think the product is good, but there has to be better writing and someone has to really just I don't know hopefully get to Vince and tell him listen this we can't continue to do stuff like this we have to do better you know and I think the reason is behind that too there's not much competition you know back in the day you had WCW that was WWE's competition so it it forced them to put on a really good show yeah you have Ring of Honor and New New Japan but it's like it's it won't ever be on the same level as the WWE at this point. They're so. not on TV every week. So exactly. Really yeah. It's not on TV. And then there's the whole language barrier, especially with like New Japan, even though they have their English um, commentators, what, what have you, but it still won't be on the same level as WWE. So when you're doing your thing and you don't have competition, what do I need to, what do I need to change in that sense? But you got to worry about these guys like blue with the young buck shirts and these Bullet Club dudes walking but in, about, you know what I mean? <laughs> like all these audiences are like they 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 have their own alternatives, right? You know? but, but it just sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, but you technically, anyway. technically, you cut me off because I wasn't finished with my my thoughts. Well, so. Peter finished talking and I was responding, but go ahead. So anyway, uh, yeah, I don't. They don't have competition or what have you, and but someone has some. I feel like, like you said, with the whole people were coming in with Young Buck shirts and Bullet Club shirts. You know, if you want, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't want that to take over your 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 product, something has to be done. So, yeah, in my opinion, uh, in terms of the product, it's fine, it's okay. Like, like she said, it could be better because you could use different different people in different ma- matters. Like for some reason, the tag team division has been diminished on SmackDown and on Raw. To be honest with you. So what happens to the tag team division? The women's division has been doing fine on SmackDown, but it feels like it's stagnant a lot on Raw. You know what I'm saying? Like, Which before it was it was stagnant on SmackDown, and it felt like the Raw women was starting to pick up. And then before that, it was SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you put both of them on the same level at the same time to make it believable? Because don't we complain every, or at least a, a lot of people that I follow complain that ah the women are in six. In a six women tag team yeah. match, there's another tag team yeah. match. When they're on live events, tag team matches. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, so they need to do more with the people that they have. Like you have three hours. Like we had this discussion before the show started. Cut back on the commercials. You could afford it at this point. 
You done took away our pyro. So you can afford to miss a couple of commercials. But Radio stations have commercial free hours. Right. You no, know, WWE is bigger than some. And of they tried know? they tried that um a couple of episodes where they was just it was a commercial free type thing. I don't but know then if it was a holiday. It was just like, but it was just like skits and like product placements. And, and that's and so, the, <laughs> so my thing is with that, you you don't necessarily have to get rid of commercials because no. you it no. you don't I'm not saying get rid of commercials. I'm not. You said cut down. I understand what you're saying. But you said get rid of. But let me finish. Bro. All right, go ahead. Let me bro. finish. You cut is me it? off. This is my time. You talked all you wanted. This so is anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think you necessarily have to cut down on commercials, but stop putting in, you know, certain things don't need to go on for 15, 20 minutes or random. No way Jose doesn't need to bring his conga line out. I kind of like that. I kind of like the Congo line. You, my, you're going too far. That's my No, that's I'm going too guy. far. It's fine, but that's it's my like, guy. <laughs> for thir- at Backlash, it was 30 minutes. Well, yeah, no, yeah, no. You know Backlash I mean? is different because it was even surrounded about um, No Way Jose. It was surrounded around New Day. Uh, New Day and Elias. Bobby Roode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not his fault. It's just like it's just, yeah. things you know like that should be exactly, cut down. Exactly. Can be cut down. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just a matter of prioritizing what you can cash in on, right? Because there's so many, like, Cool, Elias is great at what he 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 does, but what is he doing right now? Same thing when we have this conversation about Braun. Braun is great, you know. He's gonna get tiring though because. He's but it's gonna get thing. boring because it's the same. What is Braun doing? People love Finn Balor. When has Finn actually been in a really legit legit uh, feud? He had, there was the triple threat thing with Seth and the Miz, but it wasn't actually his feud. Maybe they 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 teased the whole thing with him and Seth, but the whole point is. What are you doing with Finn? And that's that's someone that makes the company money. He's popular. You know what I mean? I think someone needs to prioritize on with their talent and stop pushing certain things that are like that are not, you know, needed and push start pushing other people and just and just and go from there. We need a direction, is right. what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. And with the and the fact of the other promotions like Ring of Honor and Junior Japan and even now MLW, it's just like they're gonna grow and they're gonna figure it out. Because right now with New Japan, um, I'm not even sure if a lot of people know this, is that they're working on a deal with a uh, homie that owns the De- um, Mavericks, Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Wow. They're working with Mark Cuban to try to do a weekly program now on uh, Access TV. Because they do stuff with Access TV. Yes. It's just not very promoted much. And it's just like the best matches out of the four hours. So now they're trying to work something out where they can have a weekly program on Access TV. And that's going to cause a Live whole lot of... Sh- package. Right. Huh? Live or packaged? Yeah. Is it? Um, it's gonna be packaged because yeah. it's still in Japan. Okay. But then when they come over here, maybe do some of the live stuff when they come to California. Yes. They're gonna be in Florida on in June, and like that'll stuff like that. Problems. And Mark Mark Cuban is the type that like, yo, just bring the entire product over for a year. Let's try this out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. But remember last time when you had a big money guy throw money at wrestling? What happens? You yeah, know what I mean? with WCW. But yeah. I feel like Mark Cuban is a little bit more smarter okay. and more calculated. And he's the type to see what Ted Turner did and messed up at. It was like, yo, all right, let's do it this way then. And he's the type of not even put his hands in the wrestling business, let them run it like they've been running it. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And let them figure it out or put people that have success to help them along the way. And I understand, I understand that, but still it's it, not to say it can't be done, but it's just yeah, it's a long be, process. It's a it's gonna be a long process just for the simple fact that the WWE has all these sponsorships. They have these deals, you know what I mean? That right They're now, publicly traded. They're publicly traded. So you have now you have all these stockholders and this and that and the third just they have a lot of backing at the at this point. So It'll be really challenging for other promotions to really compete. Not and t- not all these companies want to be WWE. Right. You know what I mean? They want to exactly. be good at what they do exactly. and keep their audience satisfied exactly. while slowly expanding. Because exactly. that's what New Japan is doing right, right. now. And it's, it's working. Exactly. To say what you, in the, I get what you're saying, but those people that are back in WWE have competitors. So those competitors mm-hmm. will look at New Japan like or Ring of Honor because they would definitely work with Ring of Honor if they do something over here. Mm-hmm. And be like, yo... Oh, you're or at WWE. Ah, right, we're gonna take this part right here that's on a rise. That you know, Young Bucks merch is everywhere, and you know what I'm saying. Like, they're gonna go like, there's Pepsi and there's Coke. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coke is with WWE. All right, Pepsi. I'm gonna go with New Japan and, and Ring of Honor over here. So it's it's room for it. It's just gonna take a long time. It's a long process. It's it's not right now. WWE is it. Yeah. And there's, there's no ifs ands or buts about it. So they just gotta get more consistent and a little bit better in 
uh, interacting with their fans and reading, feeling what their fans really want. All right, guys. So where can people find the Mixed Tag Show? Because you guys are very multimedia. You're everywhere. We're everywhere, baby. We, we, yeah, we, we try. Live. We live. We, we live. Um, <laughs> you can find the Mixed Tag Show at all, on all podcast platforms, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Google, Spotify, Google Play. And if people in, prefer to see my wonderful face and this guy, um, <laughs> <laughs> they we we do. Um, he goes through the roof over I here. I tell you, I'm a star That's now. I call her boss. Like, I think I'm playing. Like I'm a this. star now. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. But yeah, no, um, you can also find us on YouTube. We have our episodes where they can watch as well if they prefer yep. watching us instead. And Jenna has Jenna only likes green M and M's and green gummy bears. I don't on her writer. I actually don't like chocolate, so yeah. So <laughs> someone's fired. <laughs> she fired M and M somewhere. True. She's like, yeah, now who did this? <laughs> You're fired. I'm kind of like Mr. McMahon, right? right? Yeah. That 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 character. But oh, no. that just gave me an idea. For we'll a talk promo? about it later. <laughs> for a promo okay Vince had the uh, kiss my ass club but Jenna has the kiss my watch club <laughs> yeah. yeah bam <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot we just be talking and it comes to our mind like oh that'd be dope alright we'll talk about it later <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly but yeah that's where you, you can find us on also the- you can also find us on our social media at the mixed tag show you can follow me at blue magic grind you can follow my lovely co-host at at miss Jenna baby yeah. B a y b e e. She thinks she's Carmela, so she spells it out every time. Because if I say <laughs> if I say Miss Jenna, baby, you're gonna I know, look I know, up I know. B a b y, right? Right. Exactly. I know. I'm just messing. With you. And yeah. this has been level nine of my little underground. I'm Peter A. We're yeah. everywhere. It's everywhere. And everywhere. now iHeartRadio and on my site Peter A Radio. Subscribe to this man's show. Yes. yes. All right. Peace out. I don't like watching shows that you. Have to wait week to week. No, I don't like watching shows where you have to follow. Like you have to watch this series to get to know what this is. This is just a whole new kind of like different things. And it different started world. with season one. Yeah, exactly. So you just you get right into it. You know who Ash is. You you're introduced to Misty. Misty's Brock. not in there. Misty no. and Brock is not in there. That's what I'm saying. You're introduced Damn. to his new friends, and then they are his adventures. He's always had friends. I'm saying he like he got other friends other than Misty and Brock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it, there's this one girl named Serena that's like in love with him. Oh wow! And he's uh, so oblivious to it. I'm like, bruh. Didn't Misty like have a crush on him or something like that? I don't think she did. I don't think. I she think did. she did a little bit. No, I don't know. No, nah, she know. really could. Maybe it I was, it was, it was like, something. It was something that she learned to like. I don't know. I can't remember. I would have to. I think she did have like a little crush on him and then just like try to suppress it. You know, get a they used to bear, like she get a well, bear spot. Well, with this one, Ser- Serena, you she's know, all out with she, it. She's not all out, but you can tell she has feelings, and she went traveled so far to get like meet him because she remembers him when they went to like Pokemon school together, and she got scared. Pokemon school, <laughs> yeah, and I forgot what I think it was a polywag or something that she got scared and he ran off with something of hers. So she was all alone, and Ash found her. He's like, "Don't cry, Miss," or something like that put the band-aid around her yeah. and she was smitten ever since so she had to find him so she found Aww. him right so she found him on um <laughs> he was battling some pokemon because it bugged out because the professors because team rocket you know did something so the po- pokemon was bugging out and just like shooting his like side beams all over the place so you know ash wants to save the day team rocket is ultimate heel Ultimate. Ultimate. You could never like Team Rocket. Whoever likes Team Rocket is. I did. I low key liked them, even though I hated them too. I hated them. They're a Tomaso shopper. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Piece, Piece of shit they are.